Hey Trail Kreitzer at Go Hunt. Uh, back again talking about some of the most commonly asked questions as part of our application strategy articles. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about Colorado and some of the commonly asked questions that we get. Uh, we're doing these to try to help people alleviate some of those like barrier entry level questions into applying in some of the different states. Uh, things like, do I have to buy a hunting license, or how does the draw system work? Uh, just trying to answer some of those common questions to help get your foot in the door. Uh, if you're an insider and you've been an insider, you're probably familiar with some of this. Uh, if not, all this uh, type of information exists either within the application strategy or the state rules and regs section of your account. If you're not an insider, you should be. Um, all this is available to you. Uh, and then you can take this information and really start to use that in putting together an application strategy for this state. You can start to explore things like draw odds. Um, you can explore things like the unit profiles or you can use the filtering 2.0 to really help you fine tune and find the type of hunt that you're looking for. So that insider account is definitely a valuable tool to you if you're looking to apply in Colorado or any state in the West. We are running a promo along with some of these videos. So if you look in the description below, you're gonna see that promo. So use that promo, sign up for your Insider account. Uh, application season is upon us. We're gonna kick off in January and run that thing all the way through about June, July, uh, when all those applications are due. Uh, it's the best time of year. You start to see what permits you're gonna draw and start to put together a plan for the fall of 2021. So let's say goodbye to 2020 and let's jump into 2021. So I'm gonna jump in and just start talking about some of the common questions. So for Colorado, do I have to buy a hunting license to apply? And you do, you have to buy a hunting license. This is somewhat new in the last couple of years. For non-residents, it's about 89 bucks. Uh, if you look in their list of what they call qualifying licenses you will see that there's a couple of different options but the most common is just that general hunting license which like i said for a non-resident is about 89 dollars you have to buy that it is non-refundable if you want to apply in colorado beyond that there's going to be an application fee for each species that you apply for overall colorado is a relatively economic state to apply in it is a must apply a state it's definitely for deer elk um, and maybe some of the other species which we'll talk about and you can kind of decide if it makes sense for you. What is a preference point? So Colorado is a true preference point state when it comes to deer, elk, and antelope. And what a true preference point state means is that they are going to allocate the permits for each hunt to the applicants with the most points that apply. So if you apply with no preference points for a hunt that has historically taken five, six, seven, eight points, you're not gonna draw that permit. You have no chance of drawing because it is a true preference point state. Be aware of that. Every year we see tons of people that apply for elk hunts in that northwest corner of the state, you know, 210, 201. And I talk to them on the phone and they say, someday I'm gonna hunt that. You know, I'm gonna be the lucky guy that draws that permit. And I hate to say it, but you're not going to be that guy if you have no points or two points or 10 points. And you're probably never going to catch that top point pool. So be aware of that because Colorado will allow you to apply for hunts that essentially you have no chance of drawing. So don't be that guy. Don't waste your money. Make sure that you look at the draw odds and understand that it's a true preference point. You're not going to draw it unless you are the max point applicant for any given hunt. So be aware of that. What happens to my preference points in a group application? Um, where Colorado has a lot of hunts, both for deer, elk, uh, even antelope. Um, they've got archery hunts, muzzleloader hunts, rifle hunts, lots of different opportunities to apply and go hunting. A lot of people want to apply with their buddies uh, and go on a hunt in Colorado and make sure that they all drop permits. So this is a pretty common question and I think people assume uh, because in a lot of states what they're going to do is average your points that they're actually going to do the same thing in Colorado which is not I repeat that is not the case in Colorado for a group application what they're going to do with a group application in Colorado is you are actually going to go into the draw with the lowest number of points of any individual on your group 
So let's say there's a group of five of you apply and one guy in your group has zero points and the rest of you have five. Your application is gonna go into the draw with no points because that one guy on your application has no points. So be aware of that. You definitely wanna plan ahead if you're applying as a group. You will go in with the lowest number of points of any individual on your application. The next question, and this becomes extremely important in Colorado, is what is point creep? People have heard uh, other people or us talk about point creep, especially in a state like Colorado. So I wanted to touch on that and exactly what is point creep and what that means in Colorado. So point creep is when you have less permits than you have applicants every year. And so essentially what happens is every single year that point level to draw a permit jumps one more point because you have less permits than you have people that apply. So each year, you know, you look at the odds and you think, I'm gonna catch that, I'm gonna draw that permit this year, it had 100% odds this last year. Reality is, is you probably won't because there were more applicants at that point level and less permits than there are applicants. So it just keeps jumping every single year. So you wanna be aware of point creep. This is why the detailed draw odds page become very important within your Insider account. And for the hunts that you're kind of right there on the edge, you're looking at, you know, maybe they had 100% odds last year. You wanna look at those point creeps. Uh, you wanna look at the detailed draw odds to see the year over year. That's when that five year trend is really gonna be helpful for you. You can kind of help yourself understand if you're gonna draw that tag this year, where this is a true preference point system. So be aware of point creep. Use those detailed draw odds pages to your advantage. Look at the trends and help yourself draw a permit by evaluating point creep in Colorado. Another question, what's the deal with moose, sheep, and mountain goat applications in Colorado? So these species actually run on a slightly different system than deer, elk, and antelope. Uh, essentially what you have is a system where you have to apply for three years and build preference points for moose, Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep, and mountain goat. After that third year, you're gonna start applying and you'll actually be considered in the draw. And for every year that you apply in that draw and you're unsuccessful, they will give you a weighted point. So beyond that three point level, it's actually a random draw with a weighted point system. And there's some complexities on how they calculate that. But what it boils down to is essentially after your third year of building preference points, you'll be considered in the draw and then statistically, the more weighted points you have, the better odds you have of drawing one of these permits, which is randomly allocated. There is a little bit of a difference here under this sheep category. So you have two species of sheep in Colorado. You have Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep, which is the same system as moose and mountain goat, which I just touched on. You have another sheep species, which is Desert Bighorn Sheep. You have one permit typically for non-residents. That permit is completely random, no point system. You apply for it, you have a random chance of drawing it. You cannot apply for both sheep species. You have to pick one or the other. So be aware if you apply for Desert Bighorn, you will not build a point. There's no point system. If you wanna build points for a sheep species, apply for Rocky Mountain Bighorn. Um, this desert bighorn is an opportunity though. Like if you're looking to draw a sheep tag, it's definitely worth considering because like I said, it's completely random. You're on the same playing, playing field uh, as everybody else. The last thing that I added here at the very bottom uh, is the big, it's the elephant in the room, if you will. It's the season dates for 2021. The dates are gonna be later than they're ever gonna be in Colorado. And this is a humongous talking point, especially for mule deer hunters. And you're primarily talking about those second, third, and fourth rifle seasons for deer. They're gonna be really late. So third season this year is gonna be like a traditional fourth season. And that fourth season is really late. Why that's advantageous is obviously those mule deer bucks are gonna be rutting the later you get into that season the more vulnerable they're gonna be. So point creep is going to be something you're really gonna to wanna to look at this year when it comes to Colorado mule deer. I don't know how many some of these are gonna jump in points, but I would predict that it's gonna jump a few. I mean, if you have a third season permit that is typically taken, say one point to draw, and you now have that season with traditional four season dates this year, 
I think there's going to be more people that are willing to burn maybe four, five, six points to draw that third season permit that you could traditionally draw with one point. So that's something you're going to be aware of uh, this year and applying. If I were you guys, I would do a real deep dive into the season dates and the odds. And I would kind of start to look for units that could have been drawn maybe a two point level below what you're at, maybe even three. And I would start looking at those. Um, it's really tough to predict what's going to happen. But my prediction is, is you definitely are going to see some point creep this year. Who knows how bad it's going to be, but it's definitely going to happen. Overall, these are the most commonly asked questions that we get for Colorado. Uh, as always, if you have other questions, don't hesitate to reach out. If you're an insider and need some added clarifications, you can feel free to give us a call. I'll be happy to answer those. Colorado is a must apply state. Whether you are applying for a permit or you're buying points, whatever it is, plan on hunting Colorado. They have tons of opportunities, whether you draw a permit, or you buy an over-the-counter permit for elk, Colorado's a must-apply, a must-hunt state for me. Um, once again, run a promo. Join up, become an insider. That promo's in the description. You're gonna have access to this information and then a ton of other information that you're gonna be able to use to plan a hunt and go to Colorado. I love Colorado. I love hunting in Colorado. It's a phenomenal state. Do the work, do the research, be an insider, and hunt Colorado.